Tansé. Ok, bonjour and hello. My name is Chantal Chagnon. I am Cree, Anishinaabe, and Métis from Muscat Lake Cree Nation in Saskatchewan, which is in Treaty 6 territory. But today, I would like to welcome you to where we are broadcasting from, Treaty 7 territory. This land is known as Mohinstis, which means elbow in Blackfoot. It is where everyone would come together, where the Bow River and the Elbow River meet. It was a confluence to bring everyone to share their stories, their songs, their ceremonies, to learn from each other, to grow together, and to build community in a meaningful way. And this is why it's so important to open any event by acknowledging the land upon which we stand. Because if you don't know where you are, how do you know where you're going? This is the home of the Treaty 7 people, the Blackfoot of Siksika, Gainai, and Bagani, the Sarsi Dane from Tsutsuna, and the Stony Nakota from Morley, which include Chiniki, Bear's Paw, and Wesley First Nations. We're also walking in the footsteps of Métis Region 3, which is why I proudly wear my Métis sash, to act as that bridge between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. When we acknowledge the land, we're actually acknowledging far more than that. We're acknowledging the families that have been here for thousands upon thousands of generations. The stories that are steeped into this land. And those sites that we still do ceremony, they're over 15,000 years old, scientifically proven. And so when we acknowledge the land, we acknowledge our responsibility to honor those stories and to leave a better world for our future generations and the relationship that we have not only to each other, but to the land itself. To welcome everyone into the circle, I'd like to share the Cree welcome song. Traditionally, when we sing songs, we sing around the four to honor the four directions of the medicine wheel. But this song is a little different. We actually sing it in rounds of three, and that's to keep the circle open and welcoming so everyone completes the circle today. Because in a circle, we're all connected. There's no beginning, there's no end, no one is greater or less than anyone else in the circle, just like in the hoop of life. So it teaches us to honor each other for those differences. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to agree 100% of the time, but it's when we can come together, share our stories, and find those compromises that our community is truly resilient. Mia Sin, which is the Cree welcome song, is from the Napaha family from Sturgeon Lake Cree Nation, and I honor that family for keeping this song and the story alive. Mia Sin doesn't just mean welcome, it also means beautiful. Mia Sin, Mia Sin, Hi, and welcome to the circle today.
But first, we have our lovely co-host, Chantal Chagnon. Chantal is a Cree Ojibwe Métis singer, drummer, activist, storyteller, educator, workshop facilitator, social justice advocate, and activist. She has roots in Muskeg Lake Cree Nation in Saskatchewan. She is a single mother of two boys and she recognizes sharing culture and building community is an integral part of building bridges of understanding and acceptance. Welcome, Chantelle. Thank you for sharing your story with us. The Thunderbird in Anishinaabe culture means many different things. It is kind of that force that pushes us forward, fate or destiny, that thing that leads us on the right path. It's also that little voice that we have inside us, that intuition, that's our internal Thunderbird, and it is never, ever wrong. It's also the voices of our ancestors. We always think seven generations behind. What are my ancestors doing to lead me in the right direction? And seven generations forward, what am I doing to leave a legacy for my future generations? And it's also that reminder that you know, we have a choice whether we want to be on the hard path or the easy path. Now, the Thunderbird will warn us if we're starting to go off the beaten path and onto a harder path. But oftentimes we ignore our intuition. We ignore those little symbols and those little things that the Thunderbird lays for us, those feathers along our path. And that's when we get into trouble. And the Thunderbird's always been trying to warn us of these things for so many years. Because the Thunderbird had a gift that it shared with us. At first, not willingly, but later on. It was a gift for all of us. So this is the Thunderbird story. Many, many, many moons ago, when we were just created, we are the two-leggeds. With Sackajack, who was a spirit who was supposed to teach us how to live on the land, he's a little lazy, and so he didn't really do his job. But he got all of the plants, the animals, to share and to teach us how to live in this world. And so for many, many years, we had lived on the world, on the land. But it got really, really cold one particular winter, and we started to freeze. And Wasakajak started to take pity on us and said, oh my gosh, I should go talk to Creator and see if there's a way to protect and save the two-legged, which is us. And so he went to Creator and he said, Creator, Creator, the weather has changed, it's cold, and the two-legged, they're starting to freeze, they're starting to die. We need to protect them, we need to take pity on them, Creator. And Creator said, you're correct with Sakajak. So go and speak to the buffalo. The buffalo will give of itself to keep the two leggeds alive. So the Sakajak went to the buffalo and the buffalo said, I will give myself to the two leggeds. I will teach them how to use my hide to stay warm like we do in the winter. And I will also teach them how to eat my beautiful body so that they can be sustained because in the winter there are no plants for the two leggeds to eat. Also, with our beautiful hides, they will be able to create homes, teepees, structures, so they could stay warm throughout the winter months. And Wasakajak took these teachings and honored the buffalo and introduced the buffalo to the two leggeds to share with them. And it worked for a few years. But on the fourth winter, it was so bitterly cold. And no matter how many layers of hide they had on top of them and how insulated their teepees were, the two leggeds were still freezing to death. And Wasakajak took pity on them again because, of course, they were made in Creators in Wasakajak's image. And Wasakajak went to Creator and said, Creator, Creator, the two leggeds are dying. It is too cold. There has to be a way for us to take pity on them and save them. And Creator said, no, unfortunately, Wasakajak, there is nothing we can do. And Wasakajak thought for a moment and said, well, what about the Thunderbird? The Thunderbird holds fire. We should give the two-legged some fire, because then they'll be able to survive through the winter. And Creator shook her head and said, no, Wasakajak, those two-legged, they'll be negligent with the fire. The fire can be so destructive and harmful Wasakajak, we need to protect not only the two leggeds but everyone else. And Wasakajak said he understood, but 
made a plan. Wasako Jack's plan was to sneak into the Thunderbird's lair and steal just a teeny tiny piece of the Thunderbird's fire for the two leggings. And so Wasako Jack snuck into the Thunderbird's lair. He reached in and stole a tiny piece of fire. So proud of himself, he started to sneak back out, not paying attention, and he tripped, and he dropped the fire on the ground. As it rolled, it caught a bunch of brush on fire, and it started to spread down the side of the mountain into the forest. Was Sakajak, oh my gosh, what had he done? He picked up that tiny piece of fire again, and he swallowed it to hold it in his belly so he wouldn't drop it again. And he started to run. And of course, the ruckus of the fire burning woke up the Thunderbird. The Thunderbird woke up and saw that her beautiful fire was spreading all over the brush, all over the mountains, throughout the forests. And she knew she had to do something, so she spread her wings. And as she flew, rain poured down over the beautiful fire and putting it out. And she started to chase Wasakajak because she watched as he was running away. And she knew that he had stolen fire. And then, as Wasakajak saw her behind him, he said, I must hide! So he started dodging in between trees, and he knew um, he had to shift into something, so he changed himself into Wapus, the rabbit. And as he hopped along, he saw a clearing, and Was the Wasakajak saw that the Thunderbird knew exactly where he was. And so he asked trees and all of the plants and the animals, who will protect me? Who will protect me? And then the birch trees, who stood very strong and were clustered in a circle, said, Wasakajak will protect you. So Wasakajak jumped as Wapus the rabbit, and he hid underneath a cluster of the birch trees. The birch trees stood strong and plain and white, and as the Thunderbird soared down, they, she knew that they were protecting Wasakajak. And so she was so angry, she started tearing at the trees and clawing at the trees, and her beautiful lightning claws as they tore the flesh of the trees created huge burn marks. And this is why the birch tree is birch that burned the way that it is. It also is one of the reasons that the birch will not catch fire like most other trees when struck by lightning. And finally, Wasakajak came out and said, Stop, Thunderbird, stop, Thunderbird, I am so sorry for stealing from you. But we must take Putty on the two leggeds or they won't be there anymore. They're all going to die. They're going to freeze. And then as the Thunderbird turned around and saw that last little bit of fire that she had forgotten to put out, she saw as the two leggeds were huddling around it, shivering in the cold, and she took pity on them. And she said, okay, Wasakajak, I will give them fire, but you must make sure that they take very good care of it. I will teach them how to honor it and respect it, but one day they will forget the teachings and it will cause a lot of problems. Wasakajak swore that he would remind them over and over and over again how to take care of the fire, how to respect and honor it, but we all know that we haven't. Now that Thunderbird, She's still there to this day, and she does cause fires, but she reminds us that sometimes those forest fires are a way for our world to rebuild, to rejuvenate, and sometimes after the biggest destruction, the most beauty can grow. In our own lives, no matter how hard our journey can be, it is for a purpose, it is for a reason, it gives us strength, and the Thunderbird is that strength. Now. I will share the Thunderbird's song. For a being that carries so much significance and so much meaning, it's a very short song. Thank you.
everyone on a safe journey back to wherever you need to be. I'd like to share the traveling song. It reminds us that we're always where we need to be when we need to be there. It reminds us of our journey that leads us on our path, also leads us home. It reminds us to take care of each other and to take care of ourselves. And the best way to do that is to share our stories so that our knowledge continues long after we're gone. This is the traveling song. Thank you so much for joining us for National Storytelling Week. See you again.